What's up, everyone? Welcome to an emergency card, fellas. Shorty, breaking news: PSA makes changes to its economy orders, and I have to say, Chris, felt like a dud. Yeah, you know, we, you and I had talked a moment ago, and and honestly, I I kind of expected that to be what it was, just because it was. You know, I didn't think they were going to lower prices right now. I think they this is kind of step one and you're seeing them getting bashed right now on social media, you know, finish the backlog. They actually have done a really good job of getting through that backlog and adding to their operation, but it was just so huge. And yes, I know there are people that have been waiting for orders for 15 months. I have an order that's been sitting there for 14 months. Like I get it, but I also knew when I sent those, that order in that that's what I was getting into. You know, I think, you know, the stuff that was sitting there for 15 months, you know, a year ago, people didn't realize that that was happening, I think, when they sent it in. But I think everyone who sent orders in in early 2021 knew that they were not going to be getting those back soon. So um, I just I don't have a lot of empathy for that. And the other the other thing is, I think that, you know, PSA can't wait until they're at zero before they start taking stuff in. 100%. I mean, you, just, you just can't do that. And um, one of the things that they said in their press release today is they'll continue to put 80% of their efforts into getting that backlog down. And we've talked about it several times on this show in the last two months that, you know, we felt like probably by the end of summer, they would be basically done. And that's essentially what they said in their press release today, too, is that by by the fall, they'll be done with everything that's been sitting there forever. So, um, yeah, I think that this is the first step. I, I do believe that prices will be lower, but I think they just have to kind of – this is their way of making it open to everybody without opening the floodgates and ending up in the same situation that they were in you know, a year ago. Yeah, so we really kind of jumped into this without really telling people what the news was. Yeah, we probably so should do that. I'll let you do that. break that news. No, it basically is the $50 per card orders are open to anyone now um, who's a car, uh, who's a collector's member. You know, So if you are a collector's club member, you can go on right now and submit a card for 50 bucks up to a valuation of $999. You had to get those lotto allocations up until this point. And so basically they just eliminated the lotto system. Um, so you said you kind of expected this. I expected something a little bit more. I wanted to see, um, I wanted to see them kind of jump into the, you know, the, the fray of, of cheaper cards, um, limiting the number of cards, but they didn't. Um, the other thing is um, they're, they're right now. The, the interesting thing to me is they're pushing their memberships. So they want to see, who's really in this hobby for the long haul. And what I looked at here was a uh, a silver membership is $99 for a year. So basically that gets you access to the best prices. The other thing that I'm looking at on their website too, is they are offering when you're a membership of the collector's club, you get exclusive members only submission events. So with this announcement, those submission events are now gone. So that tells me that this is going to be the next phase of what we're talking about when we talk about lowering the price. They are going to have submission events just like they did for the $50 ones, but they're going to be cheaper. And so what they're looking to do is they're trying to get those members. But here's my question, Chris, and we talked a little bit about this too. Who's going to join as a member today? And that's what they're pushing on their social media accounts. Join our collector's club membership. And my question to you is who's joining this at this late stage in the game? If you're not a member already, um, if you're not really into this already, I don't know if this pushes you over the top yet. This news doesn't. However, if it's at $25, maybe it is. But we've also talked about this on the show before. The August deadline for a lot of people's membership running out is coming up. And I think that's where you're going to start seeing significant movement. A lot of people may have already had memberships um, run out and maybe they, they're like waiting to figure out, should I pay this $99 per year? Right now, it doesn't seem worth it, to be honest right. with you, to re-up or to become a new member. However, if you're offering me $25 per card and I can get 25 to 50 of those per month, then I'm going to pay you my $99 per year to become a collector's card. But, but I just don't get why they're pushing that. And 
but clearly what else are they going to do? They're not going to, they're not going to push, um, they're not going to push this economy to everybody because I don't really think this news changes much. And I put this out on Twitter today too, on our card, card fellas account. If you wanted to submit a card for $50 for the past several months, you could quite easily. I was in those lottery allocations nearly every time they had one and I was getting cards. I was getting the the allocations that I that I needed and I wanted and I would send in two, three cards here at a time and so it wasn't really a true like strict lottery like boy I got this car, oh man this is great. And so I don't think this changes the game for a lot of people. And I still think that this $50 price point is way too much for a lot of people. I was at a card show this past weekend. A guy was looking at his raw cards. He's like, these are really good cards, but I can't get them graded. Too expensive. Yeah. So I don't think this changes much for anybody. And then, you know, getting people to get membership. I, I just don't know how much this moves the needle, to be honest with yeah. you. Yeah, I don't think it does move the needle very much. And I think that's by design. You know, I, I just don't think they want to be overwhelmed right now. And again, you know, they're getting roasted on social media as they do every time they pretty much post anything right. about people frustrated about, you know, waiting to get their cards. And I think that that's still important to them. I think they want to clear that stuff out. But this is just an opportunity for them, I think, to maybe start working on some of those operations things as they continue to expand. You know, if they open the door today to $25 submissions, that would move the needle and that would bring more cards in quickly. And I just don't think they want that. But I think this is really phase one right now uh, to kind of get things going back to normal. I mean, obviously, their operations have been very, very different over the last 12 months than they were, you know, over the past 20 years. So they are just kind of getting back, I think, into like phase one into getting back to normal here. And that's what this is all about. I don't think this is about moving the needle. And, you know, a lot of people, this is corporate greed in its finest. You know, they're not going to make a lot of money off of this because I think you're right. Most people, even at $50, are just not going to send in cards. A lot of people just don't have those kind of cards. I and mean, there certainly are people who do, and they will probably take advantage of this. But, you know, you're not sending in, you know, the cards that you're pulling out of normal packs these days mm -mm. at this thing. I mean, if no. you're getting a one of one or something like that, that's a whole other situation or, you know, maybe you're getting autograph cards or whatever, but you know, your, your Bowman Chrome prospect isn't going in for 50 bucks. Yeah. So. And, and I think I look at the, I look at, again, I look at social media. You and I talked about this when they announced, it's not like PSA just kind of put this out there. They promised something big today in, in their in their tweets. Like, I don't want to say big, but they were like, they were teasing an announcement. You and I were like, oh, what's this going to be? And and then you look at what they announce and where they're pushing people on their website. They're introducing this service to people. That's yeah. what they're trying to do. If you look at the landing page that they send people to, it's basically PSA 101, what you get with the Collectors Club membership. And mm -hmm. so again, I just it's it's a little bit of a miss, but I think you're 100 percent spot on. They're not ready to open the floodgates yet. They're not. They're 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 trying to build their memberships up, and they're trying to take in as many um, new members as they can, or renewal members, or people who are you know looking at this as as an outsider, which I don't think is many. But when you look at what they write in their blog, and I think this is what's interesting too. Um, you know, they are talking about we are committed to clearing out our backlog and they put a fall of 2022. So that's a couple months away. Well, they will get through their backlog by that time. Um, their backlog has decreased to 3.6 million cards. That's what they're sitting at right now. So as you mentioned, you can't get down to zero and then say, let's start over because you're going to be having a losing proposition there. So they have to continue to take these in. And I feel what this tells me too is they were not taking in the volume of cards at this $50 rate that overwhelmed them. Yeah, that's, that's pretty true. obvious. That's an obvious statement. But um, they feel like we can open the floodgates to these $50 cards and see what people are willing to send in on a more regular basis. And I think that will that will change. They will get an increase, but not significantly enough to make them rethink their strategy. Um, I think the other thing that we wanted to talk about here, as far as changes, is they their their um, their complete through date 
is going to be changing to estimated turnaround time, which makes a hell of a lot more sense to me. I had you explain the complete through date to me, I think 17 times, and I still don't understand it. It's not your a reflection of the way you uh, t- explain things to me. It's my own uh, brain not working or knowing how to work. So the estimated turnaround times, so this is in calendar days, is the premium plus is three days. Let's just skip all over that stuff. The economy that we're talking about today, they're expecting to get these cards in-house and out to you in 90 days. Now, I have had experience with this economy, $50 per card order, and they have been turning around in 30 to 40 days. So they, and that's that's from the day that it left my house. That's not even check-in day. Mm-hmm. So I think they're overestimating the, the amount of time just based on they think people are going to gravitate towards this and send more cards in. So they're putting that 90 days. So you have three months of waiting to get your cards back. And so um, that's an interesting number and that's an interesting change, the estimated turnaround time. And it's gonna be interesting to see how fluid that is, like how often they update that because that was one of the issues that we saw um, you know, 16 months ago is we didn't know how long those were gonna last, how long it was gonna take when you sent your cards in. So if they update those, they say estimated, it's gonna be 90 days. And if that never changes and it all of a sudden takes seven, eight months, people are going to then be, again, upset with their service. But if it if they move that estimated date based on the number of traffic, I think that will be a hugely important tool going forward for the hobbyists. Yeah, you, you said that you've been kind of seeing 30 to 40 days on yours. And again, those are through that lottery. And I think that's another thing we're kind of talking about, um, you know, the forward end of this, but I think if we maybe look backward, you know, they obviously know how many people are entering these allocation events. They know how many people are actually, you know, you win your your 20 cards or whatever it is that you win and they only send in five, you know, they, they know those statistics. And I think they're looking at it going, you know, we're seeing these allocation, these drawing type events and we're, you know, we're not, we're still not getting to where we want to be. So I think that's the other part of opening this up is to get maybe the numbers that they want to bring in right now, because, you know, there's a lot of people that weren't even going to attempt that they're like, well, just kind of wait and see. And, but I think the price is still probably the major uh, thing that's going to prevent people from sending cards in. But I think that 90 day thing is just setting expectation. You know, you and I have both uh, kind of work in a customer service type of role with, with the companies that we work for. And, if you tell people 90 days and they get it back in 50, that's a win. But if you tell people 50 and they get it back in 90, that's a loss. <laughs> right. so Absolutely. We, we uh, you know, they're, they're setting expectations and I think wanting to make sure that, you know, that, that, you know, if they say it's 30 and they get it back in 50, they're going to get roasted. If they say it's 90 and they get it back in 50, everybody's going to go on Twitter and say, oh, I got this back in 50 days. It's amazing. You know, so that, that's yeah. kind of how that works. So we'll see how all that goes, but I do believe that they're like you. I, I don't think they're going to be overwhelmed by what they get at this fifty dollar number, and that will continue to decrease until they get to the point where they're running at capacity. And right now, they don't need to bring in a bunch of stuff because they already have stuff to to do. So, yeah, under promise, over deliver is the common theme when you when you look, work in customer service. One of the other things that I've noticed too that uh, they're pushing people to this uh, landing page for the joining, join the PSA Collectors Club. Um, their, their only available uh, membership right now is silver at $99 per year. Now in the small print underneath that, it says stay tuned for updates about gold and platinum memberships returning. So there is going to be a tiered approach as we've mentioned. Um, don't exactly know what sh- what that means and what that will uh, will get you as a collector. But right now, they're trying to get you to sign up for the silver membership for $100.99 per year. And you get, again, at that point, you all you get is membership access to submission events. You also get a one-year subscription to PSA Magazine. That's it. And so I think this is, again, you're trying to find the people who are not connected right now to your brand and you want to get them connected because I'm interested in seeing what this gold and platinum is all about and um, you know, what that could mean for the future and see what, you know, that allocation, uh, could we see allocation limits come to silver, gold and platinum? I would assume so. 
Um, you mentioned something you saw too, and I can't find it, but the uh, dealer, something along the line. Yeah, that, that was just I, complete through dates. That, that's that's going to be all the dealer economy. Metric yeah. That's going to go right. away. Yeah, yeah. I was just yeah. kind of putzing around the page before we went on air here. Yeah, so that's that that shouldn't change anything. I think you know, um, you and I have also worked through our local card shops. And mm-hmm. I think that, you know, those it's going to be interesting to see how, you know, dealers are, are, are handled and, and dealt with with all these, because, you know, a lot of them rely on that service. Not just I don't think we've we've talked about this, too. I don't think they make a lot of money off those submissions, but it's foot traffic into their stores. Right. So if you want to submit a card, but you don't want to be a card club member, a collectibles uh, uh, club member. Um, through PSA, you can go to your local card shop and you pay a little bit of a premium. I think it's probably what five to ten dollars, um, some places um, that you're paying the card shop to get a card graded, and they send it off for you. Yep. And so I think that you know that will always have a place. Um, I just I don't I don't know how that's going to work with this the, the new PSA. And you know I know there have been some places that send in bulk that have got uh, in trouble and you know created some created some waves in the, uh, the grading world. So, you know, look out for that too. But um, yeah, that's the news from PSA today. The economy service level is back. So if you have a collector's club membership right now, you can send in your cards for 50 bucks, no lottery, but you got to make sure that it's under that $999 threshold or PSA might spit it out and put it up to a level which is um it's the level above that that would be the regular at 100 per card so um if you're if you're trying to squeak in underneath that thousand dollar mark and you come out a little bit uh, more than that that's that's usually good news let's be honest but um still still uh, something to look out for yeah it'll be interesting to see how that's policed as well i mean i know you know Prices have gone through the roof, especially, you know, these cards that are there right now from the time that they were submitted till, um, well, maybe not so much to the time they were submitted last time in, in, in the 2021 to now, but definitely the cards that went in from 2020 and came out in 2021, um, many of my cards were, were far higher than what the what the value was just because we had hit this peak in, in value. And, and I never got a phone call, and I think PSA was in a world where they couldn't really afford to do stuff like that unless it was just completely egregious. So they kind of let it fly, but uh, yeah, we'll see how that all goes. But I think uh, maybe the news here is that the economy service level is back, but the economy pricing is not. So (laughs) we'll keep an eye on that. Yeah. Well, this is our emergency podcast breaking news from PSA again, underwhelming, not the news that a lot of people wanted to hear about on Twitter. Um, we'd love to hear what you think. Let us know, let us know your thoughts on what your plans are. And if these news, uh, if, or if this news changes any of the plans that you have going forward with your cards and getting them graded. Thanks for listening. I'm Chris. I'm Matt. We'll check you out next time on the card fellas show.